Ladies and gentlemen, we are so lucky to be blessed with Scarlet replays. Spawning in the bottom right hand corner of one of Blizzard's new jokish maps is Stork, the Protoss Brood War legend, and playing under the barcode doing a gas extractor trick as the Canadian Zerg Wonder Scarlet. Shout out to Scarlet for the replays. So if you don't know about Stork, he was one of the best Protoss players in Brood War known for his multitask and if you don't know Scarlet she is one of the best foreigners uh, we've ever had and she made a name for herself at the end of Wings of Liberty and going into Heart of the Swarm and Legacy of the Void wasn't really a around so much in the beginning of Wings of Liberty one thing Scarlet is known for is her exceptional creep spread uh, oftentimes you will see Zerg players make tons of tumors and just try to push all forward in one area. Destiny does that a lot. But Scarlet will kind of lay her tumors everywhere and spread creep all around the map as opposed to just have 50 tumors pushing out in two different directions. And that's one thing that makes Scarlet hard to play against is not only does she do things like that which garner her map control, but she also does lots of Zergling counterattacks. It's one of the only Zergs to do that as much as they should. Now we see a Stargate in the wall here for Stork, and Scarlet has seen it. The reason that he put this in the wall is because this map has a very, very large natural choke. So you want to obviously cover this choke as fast as possible so you don't die to bullshit all-ins, Ling Floods, Baneling Bust, Ravagers, bullshit. So much of what Zerg can do is so obnoxious now with these maps being so open. See something interesting here from Stork. Proxy Twilight Council. Now, if you had to ask me, okay, he's going to research the Resonating Glaives upgrade which makes his adepts more powerful. I thought Stork was going to go proxy Dark Templar, but it looks like what he's electing to do instead is to make the Stargate in the wall so it's obvious and get scouted, and then go proxy, hide, uh, proxy, excuse me, Twilight Council, and do a warp gate all in behind this. Scarlet thinks he's playing macro because of the Phoenixes. She makes spore crawlers and drones, and then Stork does this insane all-in with this upgrade. Resonating Glaives. They're always patching shit, so I don't know the numbers by heart. They're the numbers of the new upgrades. So here comes Stork's all-in. It's going to be very potent because Scarlet obviously hasn't seen shit. Cause he, Scarlet thinks he's going to macro. And here comes the Adepts. Stork is running forward into Banelings, but he also has lots of Phoenix, which won't be particularly useful with Ling-based defenses as opposed to Hydra-based defenses. Scarlet with four forward Queens here. This is very good at holding off all ends, but this is where the Phoenix come in. The Adepts doing bonus damage to Light Units. Scarlet was definitely not ready for this. And Stork's all in is very, very powerful. The uh, resonating glaive upgrade is very, very strong and is preventing Scarlet from holding this. Her lings are poorly upgraded. She really, really needed 1-1 one, one to defend this as the depths do very well into Zerglings. And for some reason, Stork has not taken this fourth. Scarlet's trying to make Hydras. However, Hydras are terrible against the depths. She's really stuck between a rock and a hard place. And all Stork has to do is easily split and kite around these Banes, and he can avoid taking severe damage. A Scarlet might look like she was about to hold it off, but remember, Stork's just going to keep warping in. It's not looking good for our Canadian player, as Stork's proxied all in. He faked macro, and then he did an all in. Classic Protoss move. They think, you know, they make you think they're going to play straight up, and they hit you right in the suck hole with some bullshit you're not expecting. And that's what Stork did. He proxied his building up here to ensure that Scarlet wouldn't scout it. And then he did a two base all in behind what he pretended was macro play, which was an excellent idea. Excellent idea. 
And at this point, Scarlet only has Hydro, Ling, and Ban. Well, she might. Is she gonna hold? There's no way, right? She's not gonna hold. Stork still, kinda honestly, idiotically, has not taken that fourth. He's had minerals to do it. As long, like, it was would have been such an advantage for him to put that fourth down. Because even if this somehow fucks up and fails, he's going to win anyway. But I don't think it's going to matter. Scarlet did not have the drone economy or the infrastructure needed to deal with this all in. Stork's proxy really caught her off guard. And he's going to continue to warp in these adepts, which pretty much shit on every single unit Scarlet has right now. Scarlet's going to try to run up and defend it. All Stork has to do is split his units up like this, so the Banes don't get great connections. Yeah, decent splits. He's going to continue to warp in, but the Glaive upgrade onto these adepts makes them incredibly powerful, especially against light units. And despite Scarlet's good Baneling hits, she can't really trade. Because every time her banelings blow up, she starts to lose the fight very fast. I expect him to cancel the shade, warp in more, and yeah. So Stork cancels the shade there. He used the shade on his adepts to see the units of Scarlet, and now he's going to continue to warp in. And he's going to split, but almost no banelings for Scarlet here. As Stork warps in more units, these adepts completely shredding through Hydras. My lord. Neither player is even having upgrades as far as plus one goes. If you enjoyed that game, high level ZVP, way higher than what I'm used to posting. Subscribe to the channel for more Zerg games and other races as well.